Dubstock Live brought to you by Man City Sleep World with Zena Kata. I'm Kareth Burke. The Warriors won tonight, but it wasn't just this win. It's what they're accomplishing on the road, especially the last three games, three consecutive games, holding opponents to 100 points or fewer. So the defense on lock. They're three and one in this road trip right now. And something a little special for Steph Curry, a homecoming going back to Charlotte, where his dad played, where his brother plays currently, although he was injured for this one, uh, where he went to school with Davidson. Our pregame crew asked him, did it mean something to be in Charlotte? He said, absolutely. And you could see it in the way he plays, Cena. Yeah, I mean, this is where he first was introduced to the game. This is where he learned the game, honed his craft at Davidson up the street. And this is always going to be a piece of home for him. He always puts a show on uh, when he goes home. He, against the uh, Charlotte Hornets, has averaged 26 points, seven assists, four rebounds overall. But at, when he's on the road in Charlotte, he averages just under 28 points. He okay. lifts things up a little bit, six assists, four rebounds as well. So he always just edges it up a little bit when he goes up against Charlotte. And he mentions this all the time that it was really cool this year to see his brother uh, being in the pinstripe jerseys and the curry on the back of the jersey and saying, whoa, this is kind of like history, being able to see that name pop back up when his, his dad played. So really fun to be able to see him go there. He always puts on a show for them. And sometimes it sounds like a, a Warriors crowd. Yes, <laughs> yes. So there are a lot of fans. I saw that, a picture of a little girl who said she drove five hours. This was her birthday trip wow. to see Steph Curry. Yeah. He puts on a show on the road. People love him there. Um, and Steph, my favorite Steph shot of the night was the halftime buzzer beater. Sent the Warriors into the locker room with a five-point lead, and that helped propel them to a 39 point third quarter as well. So Steph feeling it a little bit, and we have a little bit uh, more podium sound left from him. So let's get to the rest of Steph's comments. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I thought all the time, uh, but no, nah, I want to stay in the Bay, and that's something I've talked about. There is a curiosity of what it would be like to play here, for sure. Um, I feel like I asked Seth a lot of questions just about what it's like to be back here, just because um, you're so familiar with the city, with the history of the organization. Um, I'm sure he's getting calls for tickets every single night. <laughs> That's probably uh, a little overwhelming, but yeah, that's it. Worst man is going on right now. Like, how's your like bracket as we got the championship? Uh, my bracket is trash, which I'm pretty sure <laughs> is everybody and most people's experience at this point. So, um, I do shout out to uh, my cousin Steve Snell, who's coaching for NC State, and his son Jordan's on the team, and. Uh, no, no, they just got to win, and they're in the Elite Eight now. So I have some family in uh, in the tournament, so I'm rooting for them for sure. But uh, other than that, I'm just a fan. You mentioned Seth who joined your dad's game broadcast as an analyst. A little bit. First, are you jealous of that? And second of all, I think you mentioned that he's he was better than you in video games, chess growing up. Is that true? Uh, both are true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both are true. He's he's even trying to catch up now on the golf course. He's gotten a lot better out there. Um, I have to go back and listen to it for sure uh, to see what the energy was like on the broadcast. That's that's cool. Uh, I'm out there on the floor. Those two guys talking. So uh, pretty pretty special. How was it after Draymond my back then? Uh, it was important. We need him. Said the last game, and you know, for us to try to finish the season strong and give ourselves the best shot, not only in the standings, but with the way that we're playing and then, you know, energy that's building up towards hopefully being in a plan, like we just want an opportunity and he's, you know, a huge part of that. So need him on the floor. What did you see from that pairing in the trace of front court tonight? How'd you like to avoid that play? There's been, uh, I think it's been a starting lineup the last two with JK out. And even a couple of weeks before, like seeing them get some some run together, they, you know, Trace is really figuring it out with his energy, like where to be defensively. Um, you know, obviously being a live threat, he's getting the offensive rebounds, and he helps Draymond because when Draymond's making a read on the uh, play on the, on the ball or uh, you know help side or whatever it is, he knows he has that presence behind him, which is huge. So. He's coaching him up and, you know, trying to, to help him continue to get better on that end of the floor. And it gives us obviously more size, which is which is helpful from, you know, how to have different looks. Well, next year, after that experience of the loss, Steve was saying how you can't just 
right step. We've done everything that this organization the last 15 years. We can't just depend on from 100% of the time. Do you feel that your work, or how does your workload feel different about all this season, given the context, what you guys are trying to do right now over the 15 years past? Um, I think, well, just the numbers, like I've, somebody told me I've played more minutes this year than I have since like 2016, 17. I think the last, well, besides the year I hurt my hand, I've had like some random injuries that kept me out for like four weeks at a time, or I had two of them last year. Uh, I had the one at the end of 2022 season, so I don't want to be hurt, obviously, but uh, it's nice that I've been able to be available for, you know, more of the season than, than years past. I don't, you, you change up a little bit in terms of your off-court routine for recovery and stuff like that, but other than that, it's it's uh, just do what you need to do to help your team win. Like, I don't really need a violin, you know, to say, well, it's me, I'm playing too much. It's never, never that. Um, and so we don't have any more games to play. Like, I feel like I'll be ready to go. I don't think Steph will ever complain about playing too much, but I did want to mention that there is a fun little fact about Steph Curry and his tie to Charlotte. They have officially made him a part of the roadways. He has an interchange there that is called the Steph Curry interchange off of I-77 in Charlotte. I do remember that. So he's officially ingrained into North Carolina. Okay, is it a clover with like three loops on it? Oh, I wish I knew, yeah. but that's I probably I, true. Yeah, okay. yeah that's I mean, probably, that's very fitting. <laughs> probably makes sense, right? Yeah, there you go. All right, so we talked about Steph. We need to talk about Andrew Wiggins as well. Another yes. exceptional game for Andrew Wiggins. Look at his last six games too. Again, we need to talk about, Ooh. you know, his body of work, not just this game as well. Averaging 17.5 points per game, shooting the ball very well, showing up on the defense defensive end as well. And when I looked at the box score, I noticed eight rebounds, eight assists right away. That goes with 20 points. Zena, in the third quarter, especially the way he started that quarter, okay, first four minutes, seven points, three rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block. He had it going tonight. He really did. And it wasn't that we're, we've, it's not, we haven't seen this out of Andrew Wiggins, but he did seem more locked in, and he has been seeing me more locked in. He seems more involved in the game and being able to create his own shots, being able to create for himself. But what was really exciting is what you just mentioned is the eight assists creating for those around him as well. There's just what you're seeing out of Andrew Wiggins, number one. They're setting him up better. He's coming off of really high ball screens a lot of times where he's got room to go off and manipulate the defense, maneuver around them the way he wants to. He wants those open lanes, whether it's in transitions or off those screens. And he's also being able to create in the post, right? You're seeing him go in the post, call for it aggressively in the last night and tonight, and then be able to maneuver right around in that um, the, the block in exchange uh, the block extended area. And so he's turning around over his shoulder, et cetera. Fun fact. More fun facts. When Andrew Wiggins, I don't know if you remember this back in the day, Andrew Wiggins, number one draft pick. When he was getting drafted, he was getting blown up because he didn't have a left hand. He could not dribble on his left hand. He couldn't finish on his left hand. It's like the thing about him. Guess who finished with his left hand tonight? Good. Guess who's taking people with his left hand tonight? And that's, you just see him more and more involved and having a lot more fun and being able to, once again, go deep in his bag and continue to pull more things out. Okay, and he's doing this whether he's playing alongside Jonathan Kaminga or not. So yes, we are yes. seeing the best version of Andrew Wiggins no matter who is on the floor. Double figures and five plus rebounds and nine out of 11 games for Andrew Wiggins. So this is a stretch, not just a little sample, but Andrew Wiggins putting it together at a time when the team needs it most. Somebody else putting it together, putting those minutes mm. to good use. Uh, TJD, our BMW ultimate performer, the rookie, building on the last game when he played 33 minutes, had 14 rebounds and zero turnovers. What stood out to you about Trace's game tonight? He has a bounce in his step, Kareth, that typically when you think about a bounce in the step of a rookie, it's one out of anxiety a little bit. It's an anxiousness. I need to do something. I need to be productive. I need to be impactful. With Trace Jackson Davis's bounce like he just had on that block right there, the disrespect, 
It comes from a, I've been here before. Yeah. I'm good. I'm just gonna elevate and do what I wanna do. This is where I've been, this is where I su I'm supposed to be. There was one play in the first half that I literally, Festus and I were in the green room, I screamed, got up and like screamed. I was like, what? <laughs> this man, full court sprint from the other side of the court to beat a Grant Williams that was going on a, a breakaway layup. Mm -hmm. Full court sprint, gets in front of him, gets the block, denied. There you go. Denied. Mm -hmm. This is, again, a player that's just been here before. He's got a swagger about him, a confidence about him, and he's patient. You just, ugh, I keep saying this, but you love to see it. Um, Multi-block <laughs> game, three blocks in this game. And I, and I feel yes. like sometimes rookie can, rookies can get caught with that puppy dog energy, like, I got to be over here. That's I mean, exactly what I'm talking about, that anxiousness. He doesn't play sped up. Exactly. He, he has a lot, you're right, he has a lot of confidence to him. You can see how uh, there's a piece of that video, like the easy pick and roll with Chris Paul as well. He just knows what to do when he's on the floor. And what I love about his pick and roll, he rolls with intention. Mm -hmm. You can roll with the purpose of give me the ball, right? But if you're not getting the ball, roll with the intention of dragging defense making it so that someone has to pick you up and they have to make a hard decision. That's what makes the pick and roll so beautiful is because offensively and defensively, from a defensive perspective, you've got to figure out one or the other. And if your roller is trotting through or just worried about something, it's not going to work. So he rolls with intention, which allows him to get the ball, like Chris Paul can get it to him, yeah. or to at least pull some defense. Sets a nice, hard screen. There you go, to give all the options. Okay, let's talk about Draymond Green in this one. Oh, go ahead. Zero turnovers. That's all I had to say. Zero turnovers in the last game, too. Last okay, game too. put it together, rookie. All right. Draymond Green in this game. Kind of a, a lot of eyes on him. Maybe he was lucky that this was a Steph Curry homecoming game. Um, <laughs> uh, eight, eight, and four. But you know what I liked about this game from Draymond? It was quiet in the ways it needed to be. Let, let's just say that. Because Grant Williams did try to test him at the end. Draymond cannot take that bait. Y'all, I'm behind this video pointing at Kara. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Quiet is exactly what I wrote about Draymond. He battled inside. He made some tough moves. You saw a little bit of the Tennessee, Michigan State between him and Grant Williams kind of rile up. But no, Draymond did and played his game, being able to get the rebounds that he was supposed to get, got four assists. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. And again, he did not get baited. Mm -hmm. And you know that's what teams want to do. So quiet in the ways he was supposed to be is a great yeah. way to describe it. No spotlight that wasn't uh, negative for the right. team. There you go. Agreed. All right. Uh, in this game, because the Warriors built such a big lead, we got to see a lot of the role players as well. Minutes for everyone in this game. Why don't we talk about some of these guys? How about Moses Moody? We'll be talking about Moses Moody and a little bit more on CP3 when we come back on Dubstock Live, brought to you by Van Steely Sleep World. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit Mancini Sleep World during our We'll Pay the Sales Tax event. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Everybody, we are up on YouTube. Katrina, what's up? She says hi, KB and Zena. Ladies, giving spring vibes tonight. We are. Hey, we are. Like That's it. right. Yep. D. Uh, Olip. I see your name a lot. One. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Olip. Nice to see you, Tony. Uh, yep. Regular folks in here. Jay. Nice compliment for you there. Okay. We've got some fire emojis. Appreciate you. Um, Bree. Enter the Draymond. Everybody's here. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you have a nice weekend. It is a Friday. Night. It is a Friday. It's a Friday night. And we don't play until Easter. <laughs> it is Easter like, week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. And it, it finished fast. This but, week? I mean, the game did. Yeah. Right? But That's then fine. There's Listen. A little, right? <laughs> Listen. There's a little bit of a delay because, guys, it is like almost like the equinox, right? It's like football. I mean, not fo well, football season, like yeah, camps yeah, yeah. and stuff. But baseball season starting this weekend. March Madness going on, yes. NBA playoffs. I mean, it's like everything. Is I think happening. tonight it, hockey, it, like everything. Yeah, happening. yeah, yeah. Tonight it was it was basketball. Sometimes we have uh, the Kings games as well, working through here. Yep. Baseball going, Sharks going as well. Pre-game shows, post-game shows. Like it's crazy. It gets here. crazy in it's here. Cr yeah. It's crazy. In yeah. Here. So, so we were happy to be like, all right, yeah. good okay. job. Plus Way to wrap it up, Warriors. The NCAA tournament is on. Well, and the NCAA tournament is on. Sneaking that too. Yes. So, um, shout out to the NC State Wolfpack. Go pack, go. There you go. Okay. I will listen. Love for Stanford, though. I yeah. do want to show my love for Stanford. Pac-12, 
talk about a hell of a going away party. I will miss. They are that showing item. up and rem reminding people like, hey, if you slept on the Pac-12 in our last year, we're going to make sure that you remember who we are. Yeah. It was interesting. I actually forgot that Steph had family. He has the Snell coaching. Yeah, yeah so that's right. That's, that's right. why we can throw up these. So, all right. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Dubstock Live. We're back on Dubstock Live. That is, <laughs> this wasn't just a homecoming for Steph, it was a homecoming for Chris Paul as well. Winston-Salem is his hometown. Went to Wake Forest, of course. Drafted by the Hornets, but that was the New Orleans Hornets. The that's Hornets right, that's right. Yeah, Rookie of the Year, He's also cetera, Demon Deacon, shout out to the Wakes. That's right, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Um, CP3 in this game. The assist column, boom, boom, boom. He was on triple-double watch too, but yes, you can feel his, his impact there as a facilitator. It started a little rough, Kareth. Why was that? <laughs> it was a little rough. There were some uncharacteristic turnovers from Chris Paul, and you might look at it and say, oh, the length of the Hornets maybe mm -hmm. got him a little out of rhythm, but he cleaned that up real quick mm -hmm. um, and was able to start facilitating for his teammates, particularly a, a certain TJD that is lethal in that pick and roll game for him. But Chris Paul, efficient from the floor tonight, four or five overall, was able to hit a three. Um, you, you like to see him looking for his shot more, and this is what he does best. That mid-range game, that little bunny, very, very smooth. And so he very much cleaned that up, um, you know, first half versus second half, looking three turnovers in the first half, only one in the second. So Chris Paul, overall, solid night in his homecoming as well. Okay, Chris Paul is at the podium. Take a listen. No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm too deep in the game and then played against – him and watch and all that stuff. So honestly, not not really. Yeah, I I know he knows the work that goes in day in and day out. You know, I see it. <clears throat> you've been watching for as long as I can remember. It seems like you've always come out the screen sometimes. You have that thing where you twist the ball and mm -hmm. get it back to you. Have the trace tracks and kind of lead this time. What are you seeing? What does that move kind of enable what you can think, give you a quote? Uh, I started doing that back in New Orleans a while ago, and all it is is, I mean, sort of being undersized, obviously my whole career is trying to get the spots in, because every time you see a guy come off a pick and roll, they throw a pocket pass, yeah. right? And so all I'm trying to do is make the defender react, right? He He's not sure if I'm passing it or not. So if he drops his hand down there, now he's off balance, he can't contest my shot. It's just... I don't know. I started doing it when they tried to switch the balls, the basketballs back in 2007. They had switched the basketballs for a little while during the summer. And it was funny because the league tried to say it was the same level, but it obviously wasn't. Um, and I used to be able to throw the ball out a lot further and it would like spin and come back to me. Yep. And so when they switched back to the regular basketball, you just do the same thing, just don't throw it out as far. Well. The pairing of front court with Trace and then Draymond, you guys are able to get great shots with that look, maybe without space. You guys are busting. What's the key to getting great offense uh, when those two guys are in front court? Um, just ball movement and setting screens. And Dre is another guard. You know what I mean? He's a big guard. But uh, I think we just know how to play, know how to move. We didn't necessarily make shots tonight, but I think we got a lot of great looks. How does this experience like playing with Steph, Clay, and Dre? Compared to the other stars that you played with in your career, like the James Harden and other guys in that big Um, it's more of them. You know what I mean? Seriously, like I didn't have a chance to play with JH, <clears throat> play with Book, play with uh KD last year, uh, obviously. Uh, D West when I started my career and uh Blake and DJ and all of that and JJ. But um these guys They've been together so long, and I've played against them so long. They just know where you're gonna be, and it's um, it's ball movement, it's screens, it's you know, real smart cerebral playing. And I've never played with a guy like Draymond too that could pass like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. So um, it's fun, and I enjoy when we get a chance to play together. What's Moses been doing for us the last couple of games? It seems like he's always ready, no matter what. The Moses is just a pro, man. You know what I mean? Moses is one of those guys that. You know, we have guys that 
<clears throat> go hoop days in between games or the morning of the game, they might go hoop and stuff because Mo may not be in the rotation. So he'll he'll hoop in the morning <laughs> thinking that he might not be part of the rotation. And then game time will come and coach will be like, you starting, <laughs> you know, and he just stay ready. He just stay ready. And you got to appreciate somebody like Mo because a lot of guys would be pouting and Man, I ain't ready. I played this morning or whatnot, but he just he just stay ready. And uh he uh one of my favorite teammates my whole career. Really? Wow. Moses Moody getting that compliment from C 3 3 That is <laughs> awesome. Now our shock was Tears. like yeah, That's so sweet. yeah. Our shock is not that Moses Moody deserves a compliment yeah. like that, but how sweetly Chris Paul put that. My goodness. Think about how many players Chris Paul has played with. <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of his career, yes. Moses Moody has been in the league three years, y'all, and he's played one season with Chris Paul. That's, That's big really words. Nice. This, this big is words. A, I love that. A perfect transition to yeah, really Moses is. Moody had his three point shot working tonight, four yes, three pointers. Yeah. We do we want to talk about some of the role players tonight. Where do you want to start? Oh, I'll start with Moses. Stay ready, Moses. I mean, what a lead up from Chris Paul there. This is what he does. He comes in and he's always impactful. He always has that anticipation and awareness in his game so that he can do something, whether it's scoring and his mechanical shot that he has, or being able to get some offensive boards, being able to get uh, some assists and generate things for his teammates. He really always has his hand in something. Mm -hmm. And you want something, you want someone like that coming off the bench because that means it doesn't have a, there's not a dip in your momentum. There's not a dip in your focus. So Moses for sure. Kevon Looney, size tonight. In the first half, two of two from Kevon Looney, but the way he was scoring, rolling and just being bigger than the Hornets. <laughs> that is not something that Kevon often has, yeah. right? And yeah. so he was able to get that. And that was, that was fun. He, of course, getting his rebounds as well. And then Brandon Pajemski, five rebounds out of the, the young guard. And his shot wasn't working tonight, but he was like, it's not mean tonight. It, and this is what he does. He defaults to where he can uh, to his teammates. And then he's like, let me go get the hustle points. Let me go get those rebounds. Let me go get a rebound and push the pace. And he did that a several times. Tonight. Whether he's starting, whether he's coming off the bench, we haven't seen any public pouts about that. Nope. He's just going in to do his job. Just a competitor, just a, a true competitor. Um, I mean, all these guys are competitive, but this guy, I feel like every single moment he gets to touch a basketball is a fight. It's great. Okay, couple things. Um, JK, I don't know why I said that so slowly. Clay and JK, I think I just didn't want to trip over it. Yeah, Clay was due to start, but he was a late scratch tonight. Right knee tendonitis, okay, uh, to be determined if he's going to play against the Spurs. Jonathan Kaminga has missed two straight games now with left knee soreness, although Steve Kerr has specified that that is tendonitis. Okay, what are these guys dealing with? Do you know players? I'm... JK is 21 years old. Tendonitis? Yeah. Tendonitis I've had since high school. Okay. It's it's just basically, okay. you know, your tendons have been overused, they're sore, they they feel grindy almost, and they just feel stiff, and you don't want to play like that. It's going to impact your ability to jump, it's going to impact your ability to cut, and it's going to be an opportunity for you to get hurt mm. if you don't play with that that looseness that you usually want. So tendonitis is, is it's uncomfortable. It's not the worst thing in the world, but tonight against Charlotte, and maybe even against the Spurs, these, uh, I don't know, we'll see about the Spurs, but okay. this game tonight wasn't a game in which it was worth going out there and, you know, playing uncomfortably okay. uh, with tendonitis. So I don't expect this to be a season ender. It's just really uncomfortable soreness. Yes. Okay. All right. So nine games left. Remember, sometimes you'll see the guys on the bench. They've got heating pads for the games. The ice packs loose, go on yeah. afterward. It's all about body maintenance, especially this time of year. All right. When we come back, Warriors are putting some wins together. Let's see where they are. The standings. Let's take a look at that schedule. You know the drill as Steph Curry drills that three-pointer. I think that was his halftime one. Yes, indeed. We'll be right back on Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. All right, we have a question here. Shoot, where did it go? Oh, Malvin is saying, I thought Kerr said we're not going to ride Steph Curry every night. Still logged 32 minutes in an easy blowout game. Who asked that question? Uh, Malvin did. Malvin. Oh. You and I have the same question. Actually, <laughs> our entire our team all had the same question. It's the why Steph Curry and all the starting lineup were still in the game when they had a 20-point lead. Okay. Curious. I, I would say... 
Uh, maybe maybe the coaching staff could tell that the Hornets had sort of rolled over a little bit. It wasn't necessarily that physical of a game sure. once the Hornets rolled over. And because I would guess that this was a Steph Curry homecoming game. Yeah. Steve Kerr was it's sort true. of in that nostalgia mode or like it's for Steph kind of thing. Steph that, is, that would be my guess. It's true. Steph has played against the Charlotte Hornets in his career 21 times. He's played at Charlotte 11 times. And in those 11 times, he has played once under 30 minutes. Okay. Then, I mean... So he always plays and plays more than 30, usually. Okay. Um, so that makes sense. That, it may, I mean, had something happened, we would be like... Steve Kerr would have a little fire under his bum. Um, a little bit. But, but hey, yeah. he looks fine. And he said in his post-game press conference, he doesn't want a violin, say, well, it was me. So... Yeah. It, well, it he, seems okay. He actually said, too, I can count on one hand how many more times I'll get to do this in Charlotte. That's a good point, So too. that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's a little bit. I mean, we were talking Last night, he called it off. Remember, Brandon Podemski was about to get sent in yeah, for he's him. Like, no, no, he's no, like, no, no, no. He's like, no. No, 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 no. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe the shots were being called in the times out, the timeouts. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm good. I would say that yeah. is, that's our best guess about why, <laughs> to answer your question. Yeah. All right, everybody, taking a look at the standings. The Warriors are three and one on this road trip. They remain in the 10 spot. The Houston Rockets trying to creep up on them. I was just, I just meant to pull this up on my computer. The Rockets are playing the Jazz right now. That game tipped off at 6.30. I'm sorry, I don't see the score right now, but yeah. But the Warriors have to be good about putting, have to feel good about putting these wins together on the road. Could the Lakers be in sight for them? Maybe, okay, but you also have to look behind you and make sure you're holding off the Rockets. How do you do that? Let's see what is coming up on the schedule. One game left on this road trip. It's against the Spurs. Okay, mm -hmm. that should be a game you win, but you have to contend with a well-coached Greg Popovich team. You have to contend with Victor Wembanyama. That is difficult. All right, so the Warriors come home briefly for the Mavericks, then they've got a back-to-back -back on the road. That's that Rockets game, April fourth okay 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 the Warriors look like they are rounding into some sort of playoff shape are you encouraged by what you see I am you keep three teams in a row under 100 points on the road okay great mm -hmm. keep that going into the Spurs take care of business those are games you're supposed to win then come back and get you a game that you might need to steal from the Ma Dallas Mavericks and then take that momentum into two games against Rockets and Mavericks on the road this is going to be a big challenge, but I think the Warriors have momentum right now. Okay, I didn't hit refresh, but what I see is Houston and Utah tied at 54 apiece right now. That one, we need to watch this game. Okay, B, we got to okay. go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Thanks for watching Dubstock Live, brought to you by Man City Sleep World. We always appreciate you, and we will be back on Easter Sunday. Game. All right, listen, I did hit the refresh button. What is, where's it at? Come on, refresh the Wi-Fi in here. No, it's still 54 all. Oh, the okay. Wi-Fi. Yeah, the Wi-Fi yeah, is out. Wi-Fi was not great tonight. Bree Banks is saying, let Moody and TJD play more. Yes, yes. I feel like how, how many times a season do we go, Moses Moody has like a four or five game span of games where he's amazing. We're like, Spurs he's got to be. Knicks. They did? The Spurs beat the Knicks. This is what we're talking about, trap games, folks. This is what we're talking about, trap games. The Spurs are on a mission to disrupt season. Wemby had 40 How many for Jalen Brunson? 61? 61 for Jalen Brunson. We're just getting our, our notes and our, our, our... Yeah. Yeah. So the... And it went to overtime. The Spurs are not laying down, folks. No, they're not. Do not look at that record and think of anything. Do not look at what they've done all season and look at anything. This right now is their season to say, hey, we're just babies. We're having, at this point, yeah. fun. Well, and it's the end of a road trip for the Warriors. They had a back-to-back -back on the road trip. Okay, when they're in San Antonio, they like to chill and play golf. So they got to take the Spurs seriously. Oh, it's, it's not going to be a chill situation. <laughs> they are going to have to okay. show up. Okay. 130-126 Spurs versus the Knicks. Woo! We're done. We'll on see you later. Note. All right. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>